guys, so in my last video, I said that Stranger Things the episodes were good, but you know, I just it took a lot of effort for me to actually sit and watch. But a ton of people told me to stick with it and watch the whole thing, season one and two, and I did. All right, so I'm gonna try to do a really quick recap of season one and two, and then do my review of season one and two. If I miss any important points in the recaps, I am sorry, feel free to point them out on the comments so other people that are watching this will also be caught up, okay? With that being said, this is going to be filled with spoilers. If you have not seen Stranger Things, go and watch it. If you have, then let's talk about it. So Stranger Things season one recap. So Stranger Things starts off with the four best friends. You got Mike, Lucas, Dustin, and Will. The story starts when Will mysteriously disappears. So the three best friends are off to look for him and his mother is obviously paranoid. So Mike, Lucas, and Dustin meet this mysterious random girl called Eleven or L for short, which she ran away from this scientific lab in which she was pretty much brought up. She has powers, all right? She can move things with her mind. Joyce, on the other hand, believes that her son Will called her through her phone, but it short circuit, and she is pretty sure that he is in danger. And she's trying to tell this to the police and stuff, but they don't want to listen to her because she's kind of crazy. So then her lights start flickering and she is almost certain her son Will is communicating to her through these lights in which that is where you see the famous episode with the Christmas lights and the alphabet on the wall that's like a huge like fandom thing right now even though it only lasted for like an episode. Meanwhile, Eleven proves that she could actually communicate to Will through a walkie-talkie. On the other hand, you have Mike's older sister, Nancy. Nancy's story begins when she hooks up with the school's jock hot guy, Steve Harrington, and he wants to have a party in her in his house, like a get together type of thing, so she obviously wants to go and she brings her best friend Barb along even though Barb does not want to go so Nancy is doing is trying to impress and have fun with Steve and all this stuff while Barb is feeling very out of her comfort zone Barb gets cut trying to open up a beer can it's so Steve Nancy and another couple they get in the pool and then they decide to change upstairs so while they go upstairs Barb stays downstairs she sits at the edge of a diving board just contemplating life and looking at her bleeding hand and what do you know a drop of blood falls falls in the pool. So anyway, Barb just randomly disappears out of nowhere. While this whole thing is going on in Steve's house, you got Jonathan, who is Will's older brother. So he goes into the forest with his camera, trying to find any clues that he possibly can, in which he stumbles upon Steve Harrington's backyard. Oh boy. He witnesses the whole Steve, Nancy, and Barb thing, and he takes a picture of basically everything that took place that night. Moving on, so Nancy, Steve, and the other couple find the pictures that Jonathan took of them, and of course Steve confronts him, Steve becomes a massive jerk, and you kind of feel bad for Jonathan, but he kind of did deserve it. Later on, Nancy pieces together the pictures, and then she realizes something is so weird with this picture. It's a picture of Barb by herself, but she kind of notices something. Mind you, this whole entire time, Barb is missing, all right? And Nancy's going crazy trying to look for her. So later on, Nancy and Jonathan, they meet up, trying to develop this picture, trying to see something in which they see this creature thing in the back. So meanwhile, Mike, Lucas, and Dustin find that the policemen find Will's body in the lake, and they say that Will is dead. What do you know? But of course, the gang of friends know that he is not dead because Elle communicated to him. And same for Joyce, Will's mom. She knows that he is still alive because she communicated to him too. Completely forgot about this little side point. There is a sheriff called Hopper. So Sheriff Hopper is trying to investigate this whole thing, so the director of this scientific lab uh, allows him to look at the security footage to see if there's anything that could be of value to him, and Hopper watches it closely. So Sheriff Hopper confronts the officer that found Will's body and he beats him up until the officer admits that it was a lie. That he was told to lie about Will's body. So Hopper goes to the morgue, he cuts open Will's body and it turns out it's a dummy. So that is definitely not Will. So Hopper goes back into the lab and he discovers that there is a portal in the basement of the lab. And before he knows it, he's knocked out and he wakes up in his home in which he discovers a mic in his home. So obviously these scientist lab people are spying on everyone and everything. So Nancy and Jonathan continue on their journey to try to find more clues as to where's Will and what is this creature and what is going on in the world. So they go to the woods, they find wounded deer, and long story said short, Nancy goes through some sort of tree that leads her to some sort of portal thing and she is in 
the other world, the parallel universe, the PU, otherwise known as the Upside Down. She finds a creature, the creepy creature thing that she saw in the picture. Yeah. There it was, that's where it lives. And so she tries to run for her life and she makes it in the nick of time before it eats her. No, it does not eat her. And Jonathan helps her out and she's very traumatized and super scary and yeah. All right, so now Nancy and Jonathan are on a mission to kill this creature. And they know that this creature is obviously attracted to blood. So they stock up on all these weird weapons and whatnot and obviously Steve notices what is going on with Nancy and Jonathan and he confronts her and you know it's, there's a good fight and it just gets slightly crazy. Meanwhile Lucas doesn't trust Eleven so he runs off and he tries to find Will for himself while Mike and Dustin try to find L. I believe. They encounter their school bullies and in order to save Dustin he has Mike has to jump off a cliff and L comes back in the nick of time saving Will's life. Meanwhile Lucas spies on the scientific lab and he notices the vans that say that they're electricians or something that they always see scattered around in the town is actually from the science lab and they're all going towards Mike's house. Yep, that is not good. So he tries to warn the gang who's back in the house to get out of the house because they know Elle. They know Elle escaped and they want to get her back. Alright, so now that the whole gang is together, they create this pool with salt which helps enhance Elle's powers and whatnot so she could connect to the upside down to try to communicate with Will in which she does see Will but he is in danger and the creature is about to attack Will. So the military storms and they try to take Elle. The creature comes into the school. Elle defeats the creature but at that moment she goes away. So she is gone, as far as we know, in the end of season one. And at the same time, Ho Hopper and Joyce are in the labs in the basement going through the portal to save Will, in which, guess what? They do save Will. All right, and in the very end of the season, Will is back with his family, but he coughs up some sort of worm thing that looks like it's from the Upside Down. And he kind of has this flash of the Upside Down. All right, so my thoughts on Stranger Things season one. Obviously, it took me a while because I saw the first three episodes. I thought they were good, but at, after the end of the episode, I was okay with, you know, not watching it for a while. It wasn't quote-unquote binge worthy for me. There wasn't a hook for me to keep going. And of course with this show everything sort of builds up very slowly and organically. I feel like if this show would have been one action scene back to back to back then I feel it would have been a little less realistic. But the fact that every group of characters they had one piece of the puzzle and it was sometimes frustrating because what these people are looking for, these people have the answer to this. In the end, when they finally do come together, it's great. It builds up to this grand finale, and I'm telling you, the last two, three episodes got me so hooked, I had to watch season two right after that. If you guys are trying to get into Stranger Things, trust me, just get over the first couple of episodes. It's slightly slow, but you know what? The last few episodes are so worth it. As someone that didn't think Stranger Things was all that good or didn't live up to the hype, well, let me tell you, in my opinion, now after watching it, I believe it did. It definitely did. It's great and I loved it. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I post a brand new video every single week. Also, all my social media links are on the down bar below if you guys want to keep in touch. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!